In the workshop, making a condenser oil trap with a boiler feed water preheater coil, part 2. The preheater coil is in its final position inside the barrel of the condenser. What I'm about to do is drill two holes in this end cap, which I will then thread, to take a pair of fittings, which will be soft soldered to the end of the copper pipes that are sticking out of the condenser barrel. I'm making a mark with a felt tip pen on this end cap to tell me which one it is. Not that it really matters, but a bit of artistic content in the videos doesn't go amiss now and again. I reserve the right to draw enigmatic smiles on any of my components in these videos. It worked for Leonardo da Vinci anyway. And now it's over to the drilling machine. And by using a centre drill, I can mark the centre of the holes as I'm drilling them. You need a bit of practice for this, but after a while, you'll learn to see where the holes should be. In this clip I'm holding the part in my hand, but I don't normally do this for big components and I certainly don't do it when I'm using drills of this size. This is two imperial sizes less than 3 eighths of an inch, which is tapping size for 3 eighths by 32 threads per inch. And why have I selected 3 eighths by 32? Well, it's quite simple really. Normally a steam union that is threaded 3 eighths by 32 threads per inch it's normally used to accept union nuts and union cones to fit copper pipe that is quarter of an inch in diameter. You may find it useful if I run through some of the other sizes. They are many and varied. They're all called ME threads, which stands for model engineering. 3 8 by 32 is for quarter inch pipe. 5 16 by 32 threads per inch is for 3 16 of an inch diameter pipe. Quarter by 40 or quarter by 32 is normally for 5 30 seconds pipe or 1 8 pipe. I have some adapter unions that I use which allows me to switch the sizes around. The very useful things to have in the workshop I use cones that would normally suit quarter inch pipe but they're only drilled out to 3 16 and similarly I have some 5 16 cones that would normally take 3 16 of an inch diameter pipe and these are drilled out for 5 30 seconds. The other cones for the quarter by 40 and quarter by 32 unions are commercially available to suit either 8 pipe or 5 30 seconds pipe. And while I've been talking about all these different adapters, on screen I'm currently threading the holes that are just drilled in the end caps. It's very important to make sure that the tap enters the hole squarely. And one useful tip is once you've drilled the hole in the part that you're going to thread, and without moving the position of the component, Take the twist drill out of the drill chuck and replace this with the tap. And by rotating the chuck, start the threading process off by hand. Then just unwind the tap, refit the twist drill, move the twist drill to the next position and do the same with the other side. Once I've finished the threading, I screwed in a pair of commercial steam unions. But I drilled the centres of these out to 3 16 of an inch diameter and in this clip I'm just checking that the two pieces of pipe that are sticking out from the end of the main tube fit into these unions and with the help of my small torch you can see the internal arrangement. I did exactly the same with the other end, I'm not going to go through the process but I did have a bit of a problem. These castings in certain places were just slightly lumpy. I'm using a needle file to clean round these parts. One side was worse than the other, it'll be okay when it's done. After the needle file I used some sandpaper. I thought I'd put a mark on this side to reflect the fact that it wasn't perfect. And it also tells me which side is which. The part of the casting that I attacked with the file and the sandpaper I'm putting to the bottom anyway. And in this hole I'm going to fit a drain tap. But this drain tap is the wrong size. This is a 5 16 by 32 drain tap. And the reason I'm not using a 3 8 by 32 tap is they're a little bit on the big side. I made an adapter to convert 5 16 by 32 threads at one end to 3 8 by 32 threads at the other end. I didn't bother showing this process, it's really simple making adapters like this. I used a die on one end of it and a tap on the other end of it. In this clip I'm screwing it in position and you will notice there is a small pipe needs to be fixed to this to go down into the bottom of the tank to drain it. In this clip I'm using a needle file to make a mark because when I silver solder the copper pipe into this fitting this will ensure that I get it the right way round. Time to brave the cold now in the outer part of the workshop but it soon gets warm when I turn the blow lamp on. And here I'm silver soldering the copper pipe into the brass fitting, being very careful not to get any silver solder on the threads. This is the drain tap fitting, but I also need another fitting that has a piece of copper pipe attached that points towards the top of the condenser. 
because at this end of the condenser the fitting fits right in the centre hole. At the other end I'm just using the highest of the three holes in the end cap. This will become the steam outlet. And here you see both of the end caps together with the steam outlet pipe in the left hand one and the shorter condensate drain pipe in the other. Just in case some viewers by any slight chance are saying well that's no good, you've had to put a short stubby pipe on the condensate drain to get to the bottom of the tank, why haven't you put a short stubby pipe on the steam inlet to get to the top of the tank? Well this entire thing is experimental and I thought to myself, well when the tank gets full to the top, suddenly the steam inlet will find itself pushing against some water and it will make a different noise and that will tell me it's time to empty the tank. And now it's time to put it all together and I'm using some Friar Lux solder paint. This is really good stuff, a little bit expensive but incredibly useful. This is proper solder and flux in one mixture and I put plenty of it on and you notice that I put it about a quarter of an inch up the tube because once I position the tube vertically like this when the correct temperature is reached the solder will melt and run down towards the end plate and this will give a really good joint. So that's one end done, now for the other end. You will notice the use of a paintbrush. I dip this in some water and wipe round the end with it and what this does is just cleans up the end and evens out the solder. This is a bristle paintbrush, don't use a plastic one for obvious reasons. Unless of course you want the melted plastic paintbrush effect. As the main part of this condenser was soft soldered together it doesn't need to go in the acid bath. I only reserve the acid bath for special occasions. I initially cleaned up this part using my polishing spindle and now I'm using some metal polish to clean it up. As I mentioned earlier these castings were not the best I've ever seen and there were quite a few little lumpy bits on them. So here using a cutting disc I'm removing them. And I'm removing them very carefully so as not to do any damage to the main part of the casting. I don't know how these unsightly lumps get to be on the castings in the first place but I don't know anything about foundry work so I'm not really qualified to comment. And in this case I really do think it's better to keep my mouth shut and appear stupid than to open it and remove all doubt. This clean up operation took quite a while, far longer than I'm showing on the video and once I finish with the cutting tool I use very coarse grade sandpaper then medium grade sandpaper and finally down to some 400 grade wet or dry paper. It's looking good, this is the action end the water inlet and outlet and the steam outlet in the centre. Over now to the other end and I'm just putting a plain fitting in for the moment to see what happens. This is just my idea of feeding steam into this and as the condensate level inside the tank gets past this union the steam will make that funny noise that steam makes when it's pushed into water and that will tell me that it's time to open the drain tap and empty the condensate from the tank. And talking about drain taps, I'm just fitting this one. I'm using some Loctite 542 for this because I don't want it to leak. And this clip shows the tap finally fitted in place. I'm glad I opted for this size, it looks quite neat. This is a V-block and it's used for holding round things on milling machines and drilling machines. But here I'm using it to hold my condenser, to stop it rolling off the bench. I will be making a mountain for this condenser if I put it into a steam plant, but for the moment it doesn't have a function other than to sit on my bench and look very pretty. I just wish I had a girlfriend like that. And on that note, I'd like to say thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.